Hello, I'm Brian Kibiger, Technical Sales Manager for Grumpus Pumps Groundwater Division. Today I'm here with Mike Kaufman, Kaufman Well Drilling. We're going to talk about troubleshooting a control box. Now, why do we need a control box? Well, Grumpus makes two types of single-phase submersible motors. The first is a two-wire. A two-wire has a start winding and a run winding. And the controls are built into the motor that open the, the contacts that release the start winding and the motor to run continuously then with the run winding. Those controls then on a three-wire are located inside of a control box. Now, as troubleshooters, many times what we will find is that if the system isn't running, we'll immediately take the top off and replace the control box top with a new one. But if that is our policy, what we've, we've forgotten is, is that there are other outside elements that could have damaged the control box. One could be voltage, another could be a waterlogged tank where it's cycling on and off, causing the relay and the switch to over-exercise. So as a troubleshooter, we want to follow a procedure. We want to look at the criteria for testing, and we use the Grumpfus Motor Book. Found in the Grumpfus Motor Book on page 64 is a step-by-step -step procedure that walks us through component by component and allows us to know what the value should be as we test. So starting with that, we want to look at the components inside a control box. There are two devices in which we want to troubleshoot. One is the capacitor, the second is the switch. We look at the capacitor to make sure that it functions like a capacitor should, and we'll show you. The second, we look at the coil, and we look at the actual contacts themselves. As we troubleshoot the, the control box, we first look at the capacitor. The instructions tell us that we need to take off one of the wires that go to the capacitor. The second is, is we use our own meter, and we put it on R times 1,000. And in doing that, we take one lead and we touch one side of the capacitor and we use the other lead to the other side of the capacitor and we watch the needle swing far to the right and then fade back to the left. That tells us that the capacitor is functioning as a capacitor should. Moving on, we go to the relay. First, we look at the coil. The specifications tell us that we need to put the meter and keep it on R times 1000. So we go to terminal five and we go to terminal two and we will look at the value. That value should be between 3,500 ohms and 7,000 ohms. Finally, we look at the relay itself or the switch itself and those should be, if we move our meter to R times one, we take the meter and we touch to terminal one, terminal two, and it should read zero. That tells us that in the resting state, that the contacts are closed. Those are waiting for the motor to come on, reach a speed, and open up, dropping out the start winding. So as a troubleshooter, best practice is troubleshoot the components of the control box, as well as troubleshoot other elements in the application to make sure that they haven't taken out the control box, following the steps located in the Grumpfus manual found on page 64.